That's great. John chapter 1, verse 42, if you have a Bible there. That's kind of the introduction to some apostles. That's what we're looking into are the apostles this summer. And today's Peter has, I think, some really good practical uh, lessons for us as we look at the introduction of Peter and a little bit about his life. Uh, There is everyone in this room, there are things that we can say bad about anybody. And the very same people, there's things that we can say a lot of good about. And what happens is it's almost self-fulfilling prophecy. If you say enough bad about somebody, they just, they're bad. And if you want to feed, who do you want to feed? Which side? We absolutely see that with children. If you say enough to a kid that they're bad, they will absolutely end up bad. And I'm not saying that they're not bad. (laughs) You know, we all have that. But the same kid and the same adult and coworker, they have good and they have great also. Which are you going to push? Which are you going to feed? Do you want to be treated for who you are or who you are going to be? And that's Peter. If you have a Bible in, first, or in John chapter 1, if you take a look at John 1.42, we actually see the introduction of him. It's the calling of the first disciples in John. And start in verse 40, it says, One of the two heard that John speak and followed Jesus with Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Here it is. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We found the Messiah which means Christ. He, Andrew, brought him, Simon, to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of Jonah, or son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. From the very, very beginning, from the very start, and I just can't even imagine, Jesus took one look at him, with authority, actually changed his name and changed it for what he was going to become. There is no doubt in the world that Jesus could have said, oh, yeah, wow, you're a spitfire. Man, you're a bit abrasive, aren't you? And everyone would have said, oh, yeah, you have no idea. No, I'm actually the anointed one. I'm well aware. In fact, Jesus could say, I'm actually going to feel the brunt of it. How about that? And he knew it. His volatility of Peter, Jesus knew well, and he was going to feel it. And yet he spoke to him to what he was going to become, not for what he was. I want to look at three really fast points on this subject for us because I want us to really grapple with an idea, and I want to get bogged down in a lot of detail. If you have notes, if you're following along, the first, it's for others. What we're saying is the story of Peter as applied to others, but then applied for yourself, second point, and thirdly, what to do right now, today. The first one is for others. And let's pray. Father, I'm asking that it wouldn't be just my words, but your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts. And maybe it's a, it's a shot in the arm and encouragement for some. For others, it might be a little conviction. I pray that we would relax our hearts before you and listen to your word and allow it to do as it does personally for every one of us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. For others. For others. See, names had meaning back then. Not so much today. Today it's it's alliterating and it's fun, and that's okay too. I even looked at the name Father. Father means one who begets. It's Also, the word father, 600-year-old word that means a closest male ancestor. That's father. 
Well, now I was curious, and I'm typing away, and I'm like, okay, where's the name Daddy come from? Well, literally is just, and they say online, if you look at dictionaries, for the history of humanity, the little baby person, whether it's, uh, it's wrapped in leopard and living in a cave, or it's current, the first syllables are duh, duh. Or the first syllables are ma, ma. That's literally how the name came about. So dad, dad, dads were smart. Take that first syllable and claim it. Because, hey, first thing the kid said was my name. Hey, it's just obviously I'm a favorite. Then you just added the daddy, the, the ending, to make it more personal. That's all it was meant. It was, makes it more personal, makes it more intimate. That's why the name daddy is very relational, where father's a little bit more formal. Names mean something. Jesus, as you know, is the same name as Joshua. Same name. It's God saves. How's that? Jesus' name, God saves. Simon means to hear. That was, that was Simon's name, to hear. And Jesus said... You are Simon, son of John, but now you're Peter. Petra, you're rock. Because he's naming him not for who he currently was, but for what he was going to become. Named him for what he was going to become. What an encouragement for us that we would treat one another that way. Because that's the first point. It's how to treat others. We could criticize and we can throw stones. I think of that game, um, uh, Whack-A-Mole. Does anyone even know what that means? Oh, yeah, fun one. I worked at a video arcade for a long time in college, for too long. Uh, By the way, I was the best at the uh, game Berserk, if you know of that game. I I ruled and I had Galaxian in my dorm room, a big stand-up one. That was my college education. Uh, But whack-a-mole, it's like as soon as somebody lifts their head up, you hit them. I see that in work environment. I can see that in family. And unfortunately, I see that in church. Somebody tries. Somebody steps up. Somebody sticks their head above the crowd, and they're going to get whacked down. That is exactly contrary Oh, but they've done a lot of things. I know, I know. Are we going to treat them for what they're known for and what they've done and what they're capable of in a negative way? Are we going to treat them for what we see them capable of doing? We, your family, church, your work environment, we want to treat people for what we see that they will become, not for what they currently are. And I think that it's even, it's not so much that it's Jesus, Messiah, and he's going to see that all this happens anyway. It's self-fulfilling prophecy. Our prisons are full of men have been told you will amount to nothing. That is a true statement. It was whack-a-mole their entire growing up. You're going to amount to nothing. You're going to do nothing. You do things wrong all the time. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Could you imagine if we actually instead love covers a multitude of sin? That doesn't mean we ignore it. It doesn't mean that we just let things go. But it does mean love covers it. I want to speak love and positive and future into people's lives. And I think you do too, and you also want it because we all want it. And that's what was happening with Peter. Peter was quite remarkable in being impulsive and rash, and he showed it enough. Some of the passages of being a little too swift to respond in the garden when he attacked the soldier. You look at the personalities. That's what we're going to do of the apostles. They're very different. Peter, he sees problems. I'm pulling a sword. I will deal with it later. I'm going to actually physically get involved today. Oh, that's Peter. 
a bit rash and impulsive, calling him the rock? Honestly, it would be better, even through his career as apostle, you would be correct to call him impulsive. Whatever the Greek word would be for impulsive, it fit. No, that's not what changed the world, although that personality helped. Paul's one that would stand up, and if everyone was against him, he would be like, that's fine, then I'm against everybody. That same negative group of traits are actually the group of traits under a positive movement is what changed the world through Peter and the apostles. First, I don't want anyone to fool you. Of course you have made mistakes and you're currently making mistakes. You have, with Christ in you, you have the potential to do amazing things in kingdom work, in your family, at work, because it's who you are. And you and I need to let no one tell us otherwise. Don't slip us into a category of we're just going to put up when they make too many mistakes. They're not the right fit. They don't do the right things. Look at the mistakes they make. No, we do that enough in our own life. Am I right? You know, you go to bed at night thinking of things that you said that you shouldn't have said or things that you didn't do. We do that enough. We need someone to come alongside and rename us. You're Rob. You steal things, I guess. Is that what Rob is? I don't know. What do, you do when, what do you do when there's two Bs? I don't know why they did that. There's a birth certificate. As an adult, I'm like, really? What did they just do? The typewriter stick? How did it end up with two Bs? I don't know. It could have been three or four, so I shouldn't complain. There's only two. But I was renamed. Child of God. Well, you don't always act like it. Yeah, perfect. Neither do you. But I'm child of God. That's who I am. I am called by God. That's who I am. A lot of mistakes? Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's more good ones coming, I'm sure. Sincere apologies. But keep going. And I'm saying that to you. Keep going. Surround yourself with people that speak positively to you. Speak positively to your kids. We want to speak to them and not superficially, oh, you're so cute. Cute isn't a value. You're honest. I heard what you said. That was so good. That is amazing how honest and transparent you are. Good for you. You're going to do so much good in life. Because we want to treat people not merely for who they are, but what they're going to be. It's a message to instill in others. I'll tell you the other one is the same message is for ourselves. It's for others. We need to speak that into the lives of others. Let's treat people for what they have the potential to be, not merely for what they currently are. But it's also for ourselves. If you have a Bible there, I want you to flip over to Matthew 16. Matthew 16 is a, a good text for us. This is really an incredible back-to-back -back text. If you look at Matthew 16, verse 13, this is Peter at his best. Jesus came into the district of Caesarea and asked the disciples, who do they say that the Son of Man is? At the end of verse 16, Peter says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Boom. That is awesome. That's why you're the rock. That is fantastic. Well done. You know, a few verses later, verse 21, from that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, scribes, and be killed on the third day be raised. Uh-oh, Peter. And Peter, this is awesome, took him aside, took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. Oof. 
Can you imagine? That's Peter. Peter, no one is outside of the reach of Peter. Isn't it nice you took him aside alone? Guys, move ahead. I got to, uh, I got to correct uh, Jesus just a little bit. <laughs> that is the best. Hey, uh, don't talk like that. You know, if you want to start running through your little speeches through me, I can edit them for you. And Jesus is like, you would do that for me? So you go from rock, you are the Christ. You are the anointed son of the living God to about five verses later, get behind me, Satan. How's that for a swing? <laughs> And I thought, isn't that the way it is? The lesson for ourselves is no time for pride. We succeed today. We can fail miserably tomorrow. That's why we don't live up on a pedestal. Yes, you're amazing. You're doing a great job. But it's, it's Christ in you doing that. And the potential is endless of the things that you can do for Christ. But the humility comes knowing that we could really mess this thing up pretty fast. We are not beyond that, the big mistakes. It's always there, and it's always possible. Jesus saw in Peter what he would end up being, and yet he knew the dumb things that he was going to do. Still called him the rock pretty remarkable. Third point is for today. It's for today. Today it's obedience today. Look at Matthew 26. We're in Matthew, so just stay there. Look at Matthew 26. This is Peter. Several of the apostles, there's almost nothing about them. That's how you can do an 11-week series and cover all 12 apostles because there's several that you just don't know anything about, and so we group some at the end. Peter's not that way. You could almost do 12 weeks just on this guy. Matthew 26, 31. He said, Then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of, uh, because of me this night. For it's written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter, oh boy. Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, that this very night before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, that's devastating. That's devastating for both of them. And there's Peter on top of the world. I mean, I'm the rock. I'm Petra. He stands up, and it's pride because he said it in front of every. Hey, I don't know about those guys. I don't know about those guys. I'm not going to deny you. And Jesus, oh, that's funny that you would say that. <laughs> of anybody in the room, I would expect you to say that. Tonight, not next week, tonight, today, not once, you're going to flat out deny me three times. That's devastating. I want to look ahead to great things that we all can do. We need to look ahead, and the only thing limiting us as a church, the only reason we don't build like fresh wells of water in villages and share the gospel and plant a church for, the only reason is that we don't have the vision to do it. That's all. It's not money. It's not resources of people that can teach, show, oh no, that's all out there. The systems are all there. The only reason we don't do it is we don't have the vision to do it. The only reason we don't have a 
fast growing a number, of, it's because of us. We don't have the vision for it. You imagine if we all brought one person on a Sunday? I'm not a math whiz. Public school, Northern Ohio. But if we all brought one person, we would nearly double. Yep, just about. Why don't we? It's the vision of doing it. That's all. We don't lead more people to Jesus and disciple them, not because there aren't people out there that want to be led to Jesus and be discipled. It's because we're not sharing Christ and have the desire and the direction to disciple them. That's all true. And we can talk big stuff like that, but what it comes down to is obedience today. We can talk. We ask questions about tomorrow. And God, if you would just reveal to me what's going to happen with this, and if you can give me direction, we're asking him for so many things when there is something right in front of us that we're not doing or that we are doing that we shouldn't do that we go, yeah, well, besides that, I'm looking for bigger stuff. And he goes, no, actually, I'm asking you to be obedient today, right now. And that's true. That's true of all of us. We're big talkers. And truthfully, I'm not even sure if we're that. It was obedience today. Oh, I'll whack a mole all day long. You stick your head up. I, I have the amazing ability. It's like a giftedness in the church where we can have a giftedness to point out somebody's flaws. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's fun. That's fantastic when there's known sin and disobedience in our own life. Yeah, but it's not bad. No, it's called disobedience. So there's Peter on top of the world. He's been knighted. You're Peter. On this rock I will build my church, and on this rock, it's it's Petros, it's big rock, You are Peter, Petra, small stone, but on this rock, large stone, I will build my church. Is that Jesus speaking of himself? Yeah, I think it is, and I think it's also speaking of Peter. The Bible tells us that the church is built on the teachings of the apostles. I think it's both. You're little rock, you're big rock. Yes, I am. Yeah, and today you're going to deny me. Unbelievable. It's obedience today. There's, um, just end with this thought, there are um, great people of this world who were told otherwise. Thomas Edison, there were teachers of Thomas Edison that actually thought he was too stupid to learn anything. Hmm. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper publication in his early days. You know what the reason was? He has no good ideas. <laughs> that awesome. I would love to have that HR file. He has no good ideas. Oh, also said he doesn't have any real talent. There's a famous English author, Robert Browning received in the mail a volume of his poetry from a London editor written right across it that said, Froth, Nonsense, Trash. (laughs) That's awesome. I mentioned our prisons are full of fulfilled prophecy. If encouraged and blessed, I think we'd be surprised in what people are capable of. Yeah, handle the weaknesses, of course. Point them out. Yeah, if necessary, of course, point them out. But our loud voice should be a voice of, I want to treat you for what you are capable and what you will be and not merely for who you are today. Isn't that beautiful? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Don't you want to be treated that way? I know I do. I know your coworker does too. A family member. Either direction family above you, a parent, grandparent, to down below, to kids, to grandkids. Go on record as being that one that is always speaking wind in their sail. 
As a grandparent or parent, if that's a focus, you'd be known for that the rest of their life. They always spoke positive. They always dreamed with me of what I could do and who I can accomplish uh, in my life or what I can accomplish. I want to be that. And that was Peter. That was Jesus with Peter. Plenty to say. (laughs) This guy, right, walking on water, it's Peter. I want to do it too. Come on out. I mean, it's, remember the transfiguration? Transfiguration. There's, there's three glowing characters, and he says, should I make shelters? And everyone's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're a nut. You say dumb things. Jesus will never be caught saying any of that to him. He goes, oh, no, no, you're talking to the rock. Every listing of the apostles, there's four of them, remember? There's four of them, all of them. Peter's the first one mentioned. Not first one called, first one mentioned on all of them. Because Jesus, like us, should treat people for what they will be, not merely for what they are today. So bow with me and pray. Heavenly Father, I want to pray that you would bless the one in this room that doesn't feel like they're much. Would you and your Holy Spirit encourage that heart that in you, you've picked us, you've chosen us to be your child. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would encourage that heart today. Heavenly Father, I'm also praying that you would convict the hearts today, all of our hearts that don't treat people the way you treated Peter. And we commit this to you in Jesus' name. Amen.